Number one sign of a good extraction. Let's get into it. Hello, I'm Chris Athanas. Uh, I'm a KMP developer. Tech Sports Heather coming out to, to, to close that up. Uh, today, I'm going to be uh, doing a review of uh, this, this video, a really short one. Uh, the number one sign of a good abstraction, but he kind of gets a little some things a little bit off. And I'm going to direct you to this how to program from the ground up course, um, which is in the doodly do below. And uh, it's I'm going to be going about to, to this page right here because he he kind of hints around the uh, the issue, but I think I I think I figured it out by comparing um, Alan Kay stuff to Strustrup's style of doing things and his some of their quotes and sayings and some clips. So. Uh, well. yes, and the biggest trap that I find is that when we say abstraction, we often actually do composition. And composition isn't a really good abstraction. I will give some examples. So I joked about this publicly, and I think this is the end of my car analogies. Don't worry. If the engineers had named the car, it would be called, I've got to read this off, the piston crankshaft gear wheel assembly singleton factory, probably. <laughs> That's how we think, right? And luckily, the engineers. Well, that's how class-oriented programmers think, which are a strain that came from C++. But there's this other strain that came in and gets commingled with it. That's this back to or, or back to uh, object-oriented programming approach, which is the Alan Kay style, and they get mixed together into this 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 monstrosity. This is coming from the class-oriented style, and so this is a monstrosity. So he's gonna he's kind of gonna touch on it, but I'm gonna show how you can find out what this exact delineation is with with the data and and uh, specific things you gotta look out for and never do. Here we go. Yes, did not name the car, right? It was named the automobile, something that can move on its own. So naming something by the pieces that it's made out of is not a useful abstraction. And now most of you are saying like, oh, tell me something new. Like obviously not, but it's very easy to see how this happens. If this was so obvious, Absolutely. I wouldn't have much of a talk to give because all my bad example would have disappeared. So yes, because we never ever shown how to design object-oriented programs. We were just shown these, these things, these tools, and we were told it was the answer. This is back in the 80s. Uh, uh, it, was slid the, it slid into the 90s a little bit, but it was really a push in the 80s, especially the mid-80s. It was where everyone was like, it's gonna solve all your procedural problems by doing this class, or this object-oriented, which was class-oriented, pushed by AT&T and Strustrup after Alan Kay had induced the, ter the term object-oriented programming, which he really meant messages. Well, let's keep going. So the smart advice is a little bit like brush your teeth every morning, you know, exercise, eat healthy. We seem to all know this, but then when reality hits, you now we get a little bit weak, and then we end up with things like that. So one easy test whether an abstraction is actually a candidate, let's say, at least, for something that abstracts is it needs to bring a different vocabulary. Now, I like what he did here. The abstraction brings a higher level of vocabulary. So it's a, it's, it shields you from the, all the, the gears and everything to a to a to a just a, a neutral or description without having to know the implementation, uh, what's going on underneath. I like this this quote here. It shields it, but that's not exactly all of it. If the abstraction uses the same words of the stuff underneath, well, by definition, it's not really abstracting something because if I don't know what a piston and a crankshaft is, like you know, that isn't a very useful name. It's not. Helping. Correct. And what happens if I swap a motor in? If I want to use some sort of other steam engine motor or, or an electric motor or some sort of turbine system. So you know, now easy. Do, uh, that all gets down. That's the whole thing gets changed. So this is all very tied to the implementation, these, these wordings of the abstract factory. The test is that you have something that shields you from the underlying complexity and has a different vocabulary. So here we have a useful abstraction. You push this pedal and your gar car goes faster. And we often call this gas pedal. And we failed yet again, right? Because that is not a useful abstraction. You take the electric car, they don't even have gas. Well, sometimes they have gas in the batteries, but that's very bad. So normally they shouldn't have gas, right? So this abstraction, like gas pedal, again, is a horrible name for this thing. This is the accelerator. It makes the car go faster. And I'm not trying to be funny with the words here. That is fundamental, right? In electric car, accelerator makes sense. Gas pedal no longer makes sense. So naming things from the bottom up is so tempting, right? Because the first person who probably put the pedal in had the wire to the car 
carburetor and the throttle, it's like, oh yeah, the, the, the more I push the pedal, the more gas goes in, right? I call this the gas pedal. It's so obvious, but in the end, it doesn't help the users. It doesn't provide the abstraction. Right, that's a, so that's a procedural programmer coming into this world of objects and classes and been showing that if you throw, if you put these things in a namespace, all of a sudden, all your, de all your developer issues go away. It's like, now it's a fundamental switch in how to do things. So, so basically the idea here is like, um, and this is in my document, how to program from the ground up. And I, 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 want, I would like you to go, if you go look at this document, it'll explain what, what's going on here, what's the difference. And the big idea is um, the state of the program is immutable and it should be only changed by t creating a totally new state by modifying the old state. So that's, it's functional, that's one thing. And the state of the object is private and, and only mutable by methods that are called in the object. By, that's the message idea, right? And, and you can go to this, to this list to this thing, and he talks about how everyone got it wrong, and he was trying to warn and tell people, but it was already too late because it, it had taken off a, a, a mind of its own. And if you want to get into the details of what makes it, makes it different is these band patterns, right? That, that The factory pattern, which is what we just talked about here, this thing, this thing right here. The, the abstract factory pattern, the adaptive pattern. So, so these, some of these patterns are actually useful, but most of them are not, right? And we have to let go of them, right? And and here's the the design anti patterns, and um, and uh, here's what's wrong with object oriented programming? This this breaks it all down. So once you listen to this and maybe look into some of these other things here that I've that I put together um, on this page, uh, it you'll, becomes clear that there's actually two two strains. Of programming, one that came from the procedural route through C and C plus plus and got co-opted there, and this other one that came through Smalltalk, HyperTalk, and uh, other languages like that, and that actually is very similar to JavaScript, and that that is bringing that those flavors through. Um, and of course, I'm going to be very I I prefer uh, the boop boop approach if we're going to do object oriented style, you should do boop, but in general, procedural and functional. It's kind of where it's at. If we can stay on that without having to go this uh, object-oriented route, um, you're doing you're going to do yourself a favor. Like a lot of these tasks don't need to be object-oriented, right? This is this is this is the big breakthrough. It's like use it when it's appropriate, and when it's not appropriate, don't use it. And uh, so it's very pragmatic. Uh, just don't automatically make everything a, a factory abstract class. Oh, we're going to abstract everything, and now it's just got this very brittle. Uh, hierarchies and complete pain in the neck to maintain, understand, debug. <laughs> it just made things much more difficult, and that's why it's it's been mostly deprecated and uh, in favor of these other functional styles. All right, I'm Chris. Give me a like and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.